Yeah, hello and welcome to a new episode of the weekly Spielworks chat season two. My name is Uli Blenemann and the weather is beautiful. Summer has arrived in Germany, so hopefully it stays this way and it does not get too warm, but we'll uh, see. And hello, uh, Claude. Um, my regards to, um, to Canada, of course. Good to see you. Um, let me start with an initial question here. Has anyone played Oath by Cole Worley yet? And if you've played it, what do you think of the game? And hello, Chris, good seeing you. Um, but from Oath, let me dive into the news. Um, Matt Wolf, Squaring Circle Will, is still at Kickstarter and Spieleschmiede for three more days. So here are the URLs. So this is Kickstarter for a squaring circle wheel. And this is the German crowdfunding site Spiele Schmiede. So this is that one. And um, I'm not even sure, was this Tarantino-like in is this uh, Inglorious Bastards? So no, I think it was two whiskeys or two whiskeys, but we Germans normally, if it's three, we do it in this way with the thumb. So um, Chris is saying I haven't, but I'm looking forward to trying O's later this year. Yeah, so I have it currently on my table, but right now I will start live face-to-face -face gaming in mid-July again. So I'm just looking at it, fondling it, uh, looking at the, there is already a vessel beta implementation. So I'm looking at that one. So I'm, I'm curious. Um, um, there's a question. The cubes of Pan, um, 19, uh, 1976, 1976, um, the cubes for Tharos, if you've ordered the game, if you've bought the game, just wait till the end. You will uh, get sent them automatically. Of course, you can drop me a mail uh, if you want to get uh, make that certain. But normally, everybody who has bought the game, either at Spieleschmiede, Kickstarter, directly from me, will get the replacement cubes. And hello, Steve. Good seeing you. Um, so, um, for... Uh, Last words for Squaring Circle, Will. Thank you all very much for your support here. And Mandy and David of Salt and Sass will play Squaring Circle, Will, today, live via Tabletopia at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time, which is 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. So if you are interested in seeing the game live, you can check out uh, Salt and Sass Gaming, that's Twitch, and here is the URL for that very nice channel. So there's another chance to the, uh, see the game before it's uh, being uh, released. Um, Harald Lieske, the always amazing Harald Lieske, is hard at work on the graphics for Claude Serrois. Uh, the Smoky Valley, which is the next game after Squaring Circle. The, the game is scheduled for later this year. And in the near future, I will have many more news on the game here um, in the Spielworks chat for sure. And we will also welcome Claude uh, as a guest. So because he knows the game quite well, I think. The final game for this year, so Spielworks final game for this year, will be 1837 Saxonia, which is an 18xx game by Wolfram Janik. And I have two quick teasers here for you. Let me just see. Can I open this one? So this is the cover draft. So it's definitely not done yet. So you see the 18xx uh, serious design. This is definitely not finished. But what you can see, the name is here, Saxonia and the 1837 in the top. And this locomotive has very interesting wheels. So Harald covered this one. And here we are having two of the locomotive cards here. 
So that one, which is a symbol when they are getting out of the game. And there's another one over here. So this is the final game for this year by Spielworks. So, and hello, and, and thank you, Steve, for this uh, comment. Harald loved this to hear from, from time to time. And hello, Daniel, good seeing you. And it is good that you are here uh, right now because I'm very happy to mention that Daniel Newman's watch that game you may remember from last year that Daniel was my guest together with Phil, Phil Schmidt, and um, they talked about a game called Watch. And the game Watch will be released this October. So in a couple of months, the German edition will be published by PD Verlag, PD, um, who also did Concordia. And the English language edition will be done by Rio Grande Games, so really two very respective publishers. And the game has been developed by Spiel Punks, that is Phil Schmidt's um, development small publishing house. And I would like to give you the URL by Spiel Punks, so you can check this one out here. And of course, the game will have its own web presence and uh, its BGG page soon. I've played the game several times already and really, and the pun is not even intended because in English I'm not good with puns, so watch out for watch. So it, it's really a nice, um, a, a nice game and, and congratulations, uh, Daniel. Uh, watch is already listed on BGG. Um, who wants to for anyone who wants to read uh, up about it, please check out uh, BGG. And and hello, Nicolas. Uh, good seeing you. And Nicolas, you know you are at Zenobia, so next step is soon. I hope you make it to the next round, so you are soon published uh, as well. And speaking of Daniel for a second. I got New Mills Industries rivet heads designed by Tony Milley, Miller today. And thank you very much. And let me just briefly show it to you. It's a really neat package. Really well done. So rivet, head, rivet heads by Tony Miller, New Mill Industries. That's the company of Tony and Daniel. I hope this is uh, completely correct, um, Daniel. And I also think that it is a very limited print run. The game was at Kickstarter, so I got it here via Kickstarter. But I think there are still some copies left, Daniel. So maybe if you are positive about this, just, um, just uh, let us know. How many are, are left, Daniel? We only printed 200 copies um, and we do have some left. Okay, so check that out. Um, it's a very limited run. Um, John Company, there's a question on wann started, when does John Company start? In German language, most probably I start the localization in September. That was supposed to be in August, but Cole and Drew, so Whirly Geek are still working on. They are in, the game is in final development and I can only start localizing the game into German when everything is 100% um, uh, fixed and done. So this will be probably September and then there will be on my website also pre-order for John Company German um, edition. And um, Daniel is confirming not only that there are some rivet heads remaining but about 40. So check that out, 40 left. And he's giving the email address, which is newmillindustries at gmail.com. Newmillindustries, one word, at gmail.com. Um, convention time, uh, convention times, and I'm having another co uh, question for you. Are you attending any conventions this year? Are you planning to attend uh, conventions? And if yes, which ones are you uh, attending? And before I continue, there's another question. Is John Company at Kickstarter or Spieleschmiede? No, it will be only pre-order from my website for the German edition. German edition, John Company, just from my 
website, just like Pax Pamir German edition as well. And um, I'm looking at this in a second, so because it looks like that BerlinCon will take place from September 17 to 19. That was normally a July event in Berlin, but this year July impossible. But it seems to be that it will happen in mid-September. It is still not 100% certain. But the, and the organizers, they still need support from people. So they need about at least 1,000 attendees. And they also need some support from publishers, booking small, large uh, booths. But at least the location in Berlin and the date, they are fixed. And in pre-pandemic times, BerlinCon was a really very nice uh, event. So right now, who knows what the future will bring. I'm positive attending it, either as a visitor or as a, as a table, or with a table. As a table would be also nice. Maybe it's then cheaper to, to get in as a table. Um, so, and for if, you, if there is somebody uh, listening uh, from Berlin and attending the convention, um, I'd love to chat with you at BerlinCon in mid-September. Essen, I'm having no additional info at this uh, moment, so I'll take my time. As you know, either visitor or with a small booth. Cornworks, of course, this is an online convention, a very small one. But I can probably, most probably, give you an initial list of guests here in two weeks. So in two weeks, we will, should be able to see which people will, there, will be there as guests at Cornworks. But let me now see for a convention. Daniel is saying, I'm considering PAX Unplugged this year. Yeah, Philadelphia. And we even talked about this. Um, couple of days ago, Daniel. So it's tempting. It's tempting um, because it's a direct flight from Germany. It's on the eastern coast, so it's easy to attend for me. And it's now, um, although I haven't attended it yet, it's a major convention. So in size, I think it's about origins uh, size. Um, and so, so it's tempting to, to attend it. For me, what, what is bad is the time. So I'm more or less, if I go to the US, I prefer the summer conventions, Origins or Gen Con. This year they are in September, but normally you know this, June, Origins or August, uh, Gen Con. Because this is a couple of months ahead of Essen. And four or six weeks after Essen, mm, not that much has happened so that I need to go to the US. But who knows, not for this year, PAX Unplugged but maybe next year. Um, so let me just scroll back. Uh, BG, Mo, BGG Con, or maybe some small ones. Yeah, BGG Con, early December, I loved that one when I attended it in 2019, I really liked it because it has a good size. It's not that super huge, but there are still, there's still a decent number of gamers. So. You can game whenever you want. So yeah, again, timing is not that good. And Steve is saying BGG con for my wife and I. Yeah, I can totally understand. It's so nicely run. It's lots of gamers, so informed gamers. So, so I think it's, it's well done. Pan is saying, Danke für die Antworten. Of course, so that's why I'm here. So of, of course, I'm, I'm answering most questions, not all, but yeah. <laughs> And Matt, hello Matt, I'm not currently planning on any conventions this year. I can understand. And I'm, when I'm saying attending BerlinCon and EssenCon, I will be vaccinated fully at that time, but still uh, it feels a little bit unreal at, at this moment to do this, especially because I'm living here in a rural area, not much is going on, and then suddenly seeing even if BerlinCon is just 1,000 people, it feels like, whoa, enormously. So I can totally understand. So yeah, it is what it is. See if you're saying AOSCon. So is this AOS? Is this H of, no, whatever that is. So I don't get it. Please let us know what AOSCon. And Daniel is saying Philly. So PAX Unplugged is a two hour drive for me. So I can just make it a day trip and not have to pay for the hotel. Also made per perfect sense. You love it, you stay for two or three days, 
you say, mm, I'm having enough after a day, you go home, makes it, it, makes it easy. Uh, <laughs> Matt is saying, it's amazing how you got Angela Merkel to attend Conworks 2021. And Matt, who is talking about Angela Merkel in early October anymore? No one. Elections in Germany are in September, so she's history. So nobody wants to talk to, to uh, Angela Merkel anyway, and for good reason. So uh, in politics, 20 seconds of German politics, I know that especially overseas, she is popular and we had worse chancellors for sure. But still, she's a conservative and a lot of things haven't been done in the last uh, couple of years. So that's enough of politics, but no Angela. Mm, she's history in, in early October. Um, <laughs> Chris is saying, ask me if I can. Yeah. So uh, Chris, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. If you make it to Essen and I'm at Essen, we will meet, we will talk, we will laugh and we will have a drink or two. That's for sure. I'm already looking forward to this. <laughs> Daniel, I bet Angela Merkel is super into 18xx. Mm. Maybe, maybe she is. I'm thinking about what type of game she'd like. Uh, probably, probably not 18xx, but maybe I, I, I uh, no, I, I don't think so. No, I don't uh, think so. Daniel is saying, I love BGGCom, but I don't really want to go to Texas right now. Mm. And, and Mo, sorry for saying this. Uh, I know you're in Texas. Who wants to go to Texas? <laughs> Is there anyone now? Uh, I'm, it's a huge country, uh, a huge state, larger than, than Germany. It's very diverse, I can think, and um, huge of open country and uh, large parts of open country, some huge cities. So, and uh, you see, I, I, my first trip to the US was in 85, and I've I've been to the US lots of times, but very rarely have I seen um, parts of the country. It was mainly exhibit halls, town centers, downtown. So I've just seen a little bit of um, New Jersey. I've seen some parts of California, but hardly anything else. So I was in Indianapolis several times. Indianapolis, I'm, I'm not sure if this is a place to visit, but in Indianapolis, I'm sure there are so many great places. But where did I spend my time in the convention center? So, yeah, that's uh, for that. B word Essen, but only if there are not only Asmodee, Pegasus, and other big companies. Hope small publishers are there. Hope so too. I hope so too. The diversity would be uh, nice. Question, which questions are you refusing uh, to answer? I will let you know later, much later. Age of SteamCon, Mo is saying, AOS uh, Con, Age of SteamCon. Yeah, if you're smart, you know this, Mo. If you're stupid like me, uh, then you don't know this. Um, <laughs> Matt and Angela Merkel, that's why her schedule will allow her to attend CoreWorks. Yeah, I think she, she's uh, just watching all the time, so with her IP hidden, so that's what I'm uh, thinking. Uh, Matt Wolf, um, uh, Matt is saying Merkel would be into power grid and go all cold strategy. Yes, definitely no nuclear energy, at least after Fuku Fukushima, she, uh, Germany got out of, um, of uh, nuclear energy, which was a positive. Uh, in, in my opinion, uh, at least, but still, Germany is one of the largest coal burners in, in the world. So, and we have just said, or the conservatives have, have said, we, we go out of coal power, I think, till 2038, which is way too late, and it can be managed a lot earlier. But yeah, politics again. Um, Maybe brass could be, yes, for, for Angela Merkel. And Matt is saying, I live in the US and I barely see most of the US. We are a stupid big country, and now not stupid big country for sure. Um, 
Steve, come visit us in San Diego. Could be, actually, when Harold had his uh, San Diego Historical Convention uh, online this year, so I attended it, uh, but just in my early evenings, which was morning at San Diego at the convention, because it's Pacific time. So I loved it, and I looked it up, and this could be in, in uh, could be a really nice small convention with lots of nice uh, people. For me, the long distance flight. So it's it, it's a long flight, and I'm not sure if I wanna experience this in economy. But maybe city seems to be nice. People there at the convention seems to, seem to be very nice. So it could be something for for the future. Uh, so and you see Claude, he is from Canada and he's, he has been to more than 35 of the 50 uh, states. So Matt, no excuse here. <laughs> but let, me, let, let us continue for, for a second, although this is uh, nice talking about uh, yeah, Angela and which games she, she likes. Because I wanted to talk a little bit more in detail about game pricing, raw materials in games and shipping. And one thing is for sure, paper prices, they have increased dramatically in the last year. So paper price, not for games, of course, but games are made out of paper for a large part. Um, and my game manufacturer wrote me, um, they are from the Czech Republic. Currently, the price increases radically, radically. And there's a big shortage worldwide. Cardboard manufacturers had increased their prices earlier this year, without prior notice by 30 euros per ton, which is, a large, which is a large increase, now by another 50 euros a ton. There's also paper shortage. We are sorry for this situation, my manufacturer writes. This has never happened in the last 20 years. But of course, this is not limited to my manufacturer. This is real, really a worldwide um, thing. It is happening all over the board, and of course, this will result in higher prices for game. The problem is here that um, publishers who are doing a large print run and um, have a nice portfolio of games, they can eat part of the price increases themselves, something we small guys cannot do. And this will result in higher game prices, I'm, I'm absolutely sure. So in the last couple of years, the MSRPs of games of large uh, companies and um, the MSRPs of games of small um, publishers, they weren't that different. When I started Spielworks in 2010, the price the MSRP, the retail price, or that was more than double a comparable Eurotype game in Germany. So if um, a game cost 30, my game was probably 65, limited run and all this. But in the last five, six, seven years, my prices have increased as well. But the, of the larger publishers, their prices increased. And I had to look it up because I couldn't believe it, but it's true. So for example, the Lost Ruins of Arnak, in Europe, the, uh, in Euros, in Europe, in Euros, the um, recommended retail price is 60 euros, so 59.95. And the Square and Circle will is 69. So you see the difference isn't that high, isn't that high anymore, but, with its paper prices, I see the price gap widen again in the future. It is what it is. There will be a price increase overall, but especially for small manufacturers, uh, publishers, sorry. And this, of course, is coupled by a scarcity for wooden game components, uh, in Europe at least, and not in Europe being able to print a game in a reasonable, a reasonable amount of time Anyway, so I've talked about this earlier. So if I, let's say I'm, I'm calling um, a manufacturer here in Europe and tell them, you can have my files. Now, when can I have the game uh, being printed? It's sometimes next year. Sometimes it, it's, it's, it's really uh, crazy. And um, of course, a large publisher, they can block 
already now 10 print slots for 2020, uh, 22, so for next year. Even if they don't know which game will be published in October 22 and which game will be published in November 22, at least they can block the slots. So they know, huh, I can print a game at that time. Whereas small publishers cannot do so. We aren't able to, to plan that well uh, ahead. It's impossible. So this makes life for us small guys um, very hard. Um, before I continue on this, let me just scroll back. Otherwise, I'm, I'm missing too much here. Um, and there is Nick, of course. Nick Case, uh, good seeing you. Better late than, uh, than uh, never. That's uh, correct. Yeah, San Diego is fantastic. So hmm, I have to check this out. And Steve is saying uh, San Diego is con. Historical con is great. We have a guest room so you can save on hotel costs. Thank you very much. This is so nice and much appreciated. For me, the real problem is the flight. But thank you very much. This is kind. This is really kind. Um, and Daniel, you were in San Diego too in the zoo and got some tacos. Hmm. <laughs> no comment here. Uh, <laughs> zoo tacos, Mo is uh, saying, indeed. <laughs> Von Strobel, and again, I love that name. This nice German von, von Strobel. Strobel would be okay, but von Strobel is nice. What is the problem with the tacos of the San Diego Zoo? Uh, right. Um, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Mo, the exotic meat tacos at the zoo, not recommended. Oh no, I, 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 I think so. Uh, this is not recommended at all. But getting back to these uh, raw material prices and this timing and wooden components, um, this really drives publishers to China. And I'm now really, really seriously looking into China production, which I thought I'd, I'd never uh, do because China has a lot of problems too, or China production. China has lots of problems too, but China production as well. First, there are these ethical uh, problems, and I don't have to go into details here. You know what I mean. And second, of course, is shipping from China. I'm sitting here in Europe. If I get games from a European manufacturers, so or either from Germany or let's say from the um, Czech Republic, I have them within a couple of hours. Europe is that small. And um, from China, they have to be shipped by boat. Yes, there is a train route from uh, Siberia right to, to Duisburg in, in Germany, but this is really expensive, but still it's an alternative. But if you are just printing a certain number of games, you are not able to fill a full container. So it's costly in normal times. But right now, prices for shipping from China have gone through the roof, so really, really high. And on top of that, the long waiting times in, in Chinese ports, which, we, which everybody is experiencing, and game companies, of course, as well. Um, some Chinese ports are experiencing COVID-19 cases, and so the ships at the port of Sorry for my pronunciation. The, the ships in the port of Yanxian are waiting right now for 10 days. They are before anything is done. And this will, the waiting time, will likely increase to 16 days in, uh, in the very near future. So that's on top of all uh, the waiting, um, or on, of the time th um, these games are sitting on the boat. So difficult, very difficult. So I don't know how to handle this at this moment. So well, Europe, China, I have to think about um, all this and what this means. Because the general questions are, they, are these, what will this mean for gaming culture? And again, um, there will be more than enough games to play. Um, but do we really, really want that these games will be just from Asmodee and the other big boys. Do we really want this? I'm not that sure. Of course, 95 or make this 98% of people playing games won't bother. 
a lot won't even notice because for the most popular games it's always po possible to mark them down in retail chains so most people won't notice uh, but and final question is will we go back to normal i doubt it so prices will increase i'm pretty sure so um <laughs> yeah i uh, and von Strobel is saying, let's hope the price for joint company coins will not explode too. I don't think so. I don't think so. And here I have some some good connections to Whirligig, so I'm, I'm sure this will uh, work out. Um, if you want to order them later, but from, from Spielworks, so this, this should work out. And uh, back to foodie and uh, drink stuff here from Nick. Had great strawberry margaritas in San Diego. Jet skiing and scuba, hell of a day. And I'm sitting here and talking to you instead of jet skiing. Uh, <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> Mo is saying, I would pay more for Spielworks to get them made in Europe or I would pay the same to get the games from China. I support whatever has to happen. I just want good games. And Steve is uh, confirming, yeah. Thank you very much, but still, I need a couple of hundred people to think the same. And Mo and I, we had um, a very good discussion of some, uh, we had some ideas, Mo had the ideas. I was basically listening yesterday, so we, we talked about some things and this was, um, Mo, this was really thought-provoking and inspiring. And so maybe something is uh, coming out of this uh, conversation. Yeah, but there are no, no, re there aren't really great solutions. And of course, I can complain and complain and say it is what it is. But um, we all have to think uh, about this, in in my um, opinion. And and with we, I mean the gamers. So you and me. Again, the, the, the casual gamers who buy two games a year, one new Monopoly edition and one other uh, small quick card games, they aren't bothered at all. It's, it's mainly for us gamers uh, to whom gaming is hobby number one or number two or number three. So who really care what is happening in our, in our space. Yeah, it is, uh, it is what it is, and we'll, we'll see, and we will definitely continue in future episodes um, and see what the developments are. And if you have some ideas, of course, please drop me a mail at ulihpworks.de, that is ulihpworks.de, so we can talk about this. Or if you have ideas, I'd love to hear about uh, them. Um, before closing for today, please consider Mad Wolf's Crying Circleville, either at Kickstarter or at Spieleschmiede. And thank you all very much for your support. Next week, we are having a guest here. It's Jonas Kiesling, so from Switzerland. Probably a lot of people haven't heard from Jonas yet, but this is related to my initial question. We will talk about a single game next week, and this is in some detail, and this is Oath by Cole Worley and Leader Games. And Jonas has played Oath quite a bit, and uh, so maybe we can get into a good uh, discussion with you about, um, about Oath. And I'm really looking uh, forward to this. Um, so, to all of you, thank you for your time. Um, bleibt alle gesund! Till next week and Black Lives Matter. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.